What is up, rockers of the Rock Nation? This is your fellow rocker, X, Rocker Man X here. And, well, for whatever reason, my fucked up mind caused me to forget to do this video earlier on in the day. So it was like Saturday night after my night, technically Sunday, the day of the pay per view. And I suppose the post is on a Saturday. But this is my prediction video for WWE TLC tables, ladders, and chairs, or, as what does Beast calling it, tables, ladders, chairs, and stairs. Now, really, I have to say, is, <sighs> I know I talked about this a little bit last night, but maybe to go a little bit more in depth with it now, if you guys see this before the pay-per-view, I'm not expecting that much from TLC, to be honest. I mean, don't get me wrong. TLC, the last pay-per-view before the Royal Rumble. Hopefully, Royal Rumble is different stuff right now, but right now it's not. To me, it just seems like the same stuff that, that went on since before Survivor Series, for the most part. I mean, yeah, the, the authority's gone, makes, but still, it just still, to me, seems like the same stuff over and over and over again the only thing that's not i mean every match has happened at least well not every match it's just to me it sounds i'm telling you how to word this a simple way of putting it, it seems like the exact same thing over and over it's not fresh especially for being tlc one of the most exciting pay-per-views is supposed to be of the year especially around christmas times usually Supposed to be one of the better ones. I mean, yeah, I understand you got all the big four, but sometimes the big four half the time lately doesn't even feel like a big four pay per view. But, and there's only one, maybe two matches that I'm really expecting to be any good or not any good to. There's only maybe two that I'm looking forward to. And yes, I know it's like shit, but oh well. But yeah, on with my prediction video. Um, on pre-show, and I know last time the pre-show match didn't happen, but this time around I think it's most likely supposed to happen. Yes, I got that pot soda pop again, but oh well. On the pre-show, for sure and hopefully we're supposed to have the New Day Versus Stardust and Goldust. And if I had to pick who wins between this match. Not going to go based off anything in particular. Just. Yes I know I just scratched my nose too there. But Stardust and Goldust don't get me wrong. They're one of my favorite newer tag teams that recently formed. Just as of lately I don't think WWE is doing them any good. Especially since at Survivor Series they lost the tag team title to Stars and Gold Dust. Or not Stars and Gold Dust, but to Miz and Mizdow. And right now in the pre show, we're supposed to be the New Day versus Stardust and Gold Dust. The New Day being one of the newer formed debut tag teams that actually I think debuted at Black Friday on SmackDown. <laughs> but how ironic and possibly racist is that, WWE? But no. But on a serious note, just based off the New Day and how on a roll W's making them and how they just recently debuted, 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 whatever you want to say, honestly, I think New Day is going to win. So, New Day versus Stardust and Goldust, New Day on the pre-show. And now for the Nikki Bella versus AJ Lee match. Definitely not looking forward to this Divas match at all. Maybe the NXT Divas matches I look forward to. But this one, not so much because... Again, you guys know my opinions on Divas matches. They seem to suck anymore compared to what they used to. At least the NXT Divas, they actually put on a show. But Nikki Bella versus AJ Lee. Now, last time around, I picked AJ Lee because of the outside interference from Brie... Well, not... I picked AJ Lee because I figured Brie Bella was going to interfere and help AJ, but, you know, that didn't happen. And if the rumors are possibly true that she is leaving, 
I don't know if those rumors has been canceled, dispelled, or whatever. But right now, based off how WWE is doing everything and how I f I'm thinking about it, at least inside my head, and to elaborate on that, the obvious happens. And, or based off rumors too that I hear that might make sense. But, you know, I'm going to have to give Nikki Bella the win in this. I mean, just because I don't think she's going to lose the title right as soon as she wants the last pay review. She hasn't really had any title defense. It's the possibility of the rumors about AJ Lee leaving. If they're still out there, if they're still true, whatever. I don't know. I don't keep up on news that much. I just know what to hear from friends and stuff like that. And I haven't heard if the rumors were dispelled. And yes, I'm typing a W next thing. So when I put it in the video, it's my description. But just based off the way Desby's doing it and trying to raise the Bellas up, I think Nikki Bella is probably going to win. So there you go. Now the next match of the night. Or not really the next match tonight, but the next match I'm predicting here. Rusev versus Jack. If I didn't mention either, the Nikki Bella versus AJ Lee was for Divas Championship. So I'm probably stupid, but Nikki Bella, I'm, I'm giving her to win that. And then the next match I'm going to predict is Rusev versus Jack Swagger for the United States Championship. You can already see my face on this one, so I'm not going to say much. Based off how they're burning up Rusev, yes, thank God Jack Swagger actually did finally. We see Rusev finally in a submission that he possibly can't get out of, at least for once. And of course with this whole revelation of them breaking, or breaking... Zeb Coulter's ankle, stuff like that. I'm actually going to go against my gut feeling in this match. Because the way they're building up Rusev, I feel like he's going to win. But, just to go against my own gut feeling with that match, I'm going to go Jack Swagger. Just because I feel like Jack Swagger, as well, to my personal opinion, he's underused. And I feel like he, Jack Swagger does need a push again. So, I feel like Jack Swagger should become United States Champion at TLC. Hopefully, I'm right on this because we all know last time all my predictions were basically wrong. All but one. But that was by DQ. So, yeah. <laughs> but, my prediction for United States Championship match, Teresa versus Jack Swagger. Going against my gut feeling, Jack Swagger is going to win. Now, the next match of tonight that I'm talking about here. The Miz and Mizdow versus the Usos for the WWE Tag Team Championship. Now, if I had to pick a winner here, WWE knows, and hopefully they know this, at least for most people. I don't know about the kids, stuff like that, but... I'm going to have to say The Miz and Mizdow, because right now, with Mizdow, of course, being with The Miz, he's more popular than probably the fucking Usos are, and that's the only reason why I'm going to have to say Miz and Mizdow winning, because I don't think WWE is going to have Miz and Mizdow lose the titles, especially with Damian Mizdow. It's simple as that. I have really no reason. And plus, I know for a fact that a lot of people probably don't want to see The Usos winning tag team championships again after they held them for like six months or so. So yeah, Miz and Miz out for the win. For the Tag Team Championships. Oh, shit. And yes, I got to take W next to my thing again. But anyway. Now, the next match I want to talk about is Eric Rowan versus Big Show in the first ever stairs match. Now, this one you talk... Now, this one I talked about a little bit in my weekly rant on my opinions on WWE. What is a stairs match? Is that, or is that the only weapon legal is a stairs are they surrounded? Is the ring surrounded by stairs? What? Or is it like a table smash that if you get hit onto the stairs, you lose? Same way a table smash is if you get put through a table. Now, I'm not trying to sound like a dick here or anything. It's just, I don't know. It's just, I feel like this match is somewhat of a bad call. Because... As I just stated a minute ago, what is a stairs match? But, if I had to pick a winner here. From the rumors I've heard, I like the big show. But, I'm going to have to say Eric Rowan's picking up the win here. Just because, 
just because the Usos has been on a freaking, not Usos, but the freaking, they basically been putting the White family on somewhat of a roll since they split up. So I'm going to say Eric Rowan. Hopefully I'm right, but you never know. Now the ma next match, Ryback versus Kane in a chairs match. Now we all know what a chairs match is, or at least we've seen from previous chairs matches what it possibly is. So no complaints on that. But Ryback versus Kane. I have no expectations for this match. I love Kane. Ryback, he's decent. I don't like him that much. Kane's one of my old school favorite guys that's still around. But, again, WWE's been doing Kane poorly for however long they've been doing Kane poorly now. I'm putting him on somewhat of a losing streak, at least. And really, it's Ryback. Everybody loves Ryback now. WWE's going to want the people that they like, that people likes to win more. It's just kind of stupid. But, you know. And I sadly, sadly have to say Ryback. I don't know why I have to. But. But. Now that I think about it, just because of stuff, I'm actually going to go out on a limb here. And again, go against my gut feeling and say Kane, possibly. All because Kane is, again, one of my old school favorites in WWE that's still around. But, you know me, I'm probably wrong. So my last official prediction to winning right back versus Kane the chair match will be Kane. Just because I'm going out on a limb here and not trying to go all obvious all the way through. Now the next match. By far is probably going the most obvious ever. John Cena versus Seth Rollins in a tables match with Cena's number one contendership on the line. Now. Everybody knows my obvious pick here, just because I, I, I'm definitely going with the obvious win here. And the only reason why I say I'm going to go with the obvious pick here is because look who's in the match. John Cena and Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins, he can pick up win pretty easily. And you don't know who's going to bring out to help him against Cena since there's no DQ. But, everybody knows it's John fucking Cena. One of the most overrated stars in WWE. Again, don't get me wrong, I liked Cena back when he was a rapper. Not so much anymore. And it's John Cena, his number one contendership... He's probably going to get that the, 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 the title match at Royal Rumble against Brock Lesnar and lose again because from rumors, it's supposed because Brock's supposed to be dropping the title to Roman Reigns, and if Brock drops the title to Roman Reigns, then presumably that's probably when this whole Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar feud or Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns feud is going to kick in since of course Seth Rollins is Mister Money in the Bank up until. This up until next to 2015 Money in the Bank. So honestly, I'm going to have to say, as bad as I don't like to, I have to say John Cena is going to win his tables match. Huh. And again, actually take a break from this too. I'm going to have to say something too. <sighs> Brock Lesnar's piss poor championship run. I don't. I still don't understand why he's champion. I never will. And without a WWE Championship match at a pay per view, the pay per views feel like shit. To be honest, as well. So there you go. And that's one reason why Survivor Season this really didn't feel that good. It didn't feel that impressive. Oh uh, yeah. Now, the next two matches is probably the only two that I'm looking forward to actually watch. The first one I want to talk about, Luke Harper versus Dolph Ziggler in a ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, if I may say it right now, I love Dolph Ziggler. One of my favorite guys, or not really one of my favorites, but I like him. Just, 
It's just, here's the thing. But then he's up against Luke Harper, the current Intercontinental Champion, who he lost the championship to before Survivor Series. Now, if I have to pick a winner here, Luke Harper all the way. Even though Ziggler has his speed, he has the quickness, he has the power as well. But Luke Harper has all those and then some. And, and really, I think right now with them giving the Wyatt family the push they all deserve, even though it should be Luke Harper and Eric Rowan should be as a tag team, not separate. But really, if you ask me, Luke Harper is going to win by far. Because I don't think as soon as he wins it, because people love the Wyatt family, maybe not so much people don't like Luke Harper anymore since they basically turned him a heel. But I kind of find it funny, though, that out of the Wyatt family, only Bray and Harper has remained heel. And Eric Rowan, they turned face. Don't ask me why, but I still, I kind of find it funny. But Dolph Ziggler versus Harper for the, in the ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship, I'm going to have to give it to Luke Harper. No, no fuss on that. Now, probably the main match that I'm looking forward to the most Dean Ambrose versus Bray Wyatt in a TLC match. Now, you all know my complaint on TLC match if you watched my video from yesterday when I was talking about the um when I was talking about my WWE stuff. And this TLC match, everybody knows a TLC match is usually something hanging above the ring, much like a ladder match. But like a title, a briefcase, or something. Here's my opinion. And I, I am restating this, too. Why is this match a TLC match? Don't get me wrong. I like the idea it's a TLC match. Since it is titled TLC Tables, Ladders, and Chairs. But, why is this a TLC match when there's possibly nothing hanging above the ring? Now, maybe later I might go look at spoilers and see if there's something. I know there's probably spoilers out there. But... How are they going to do this TLC match? Is it going to be by pinfall and submission? Or will there actually be something hanging above, above the ring? If I had to choose, I would have to say it's going to be a pinfall slash submission, submission style TLC match. And if that, then eh, alright. But, on with me actually predicting the match. I'm actually going to give this a clean sweep to all the members of the Wyatt fame. I'm going to give this match to Bray Wyatt. Because last time Bray Wyatt did win... But that was by DQ. And here's what I think he's going to do at Royal Rumble. This feud's probably going to continue until then. And then I think Bray Wyatt, or not Bray, and they're probably going to make Ambrose win in an obvious fashion. But this match time around, I gave it to Bray Wyatt the last time. I'm going to have to give it to Bray Wyatt this time. Because I think Bray Wyatt's going to be more psychotic than ever, especially after some stuff he's done to Ambrose after a while, the past few weeks. And simple as that. That's really all I got to say. But, yeah. That's my prediction video. I have really nothing else to say on this pay review other than, like I said before, nothing I'm really expecting much from it. I did pick some of the obvious winners. I did go against my gut on a couple and not pick. And pick the other guy that I thought. So, all I can say is, tomorrow night, or not Survivor Series, but tomorrow night, TLC, we'll see what happens. And, of course, you all know here on this channel, if you didn't watch it, based on my results slash review video. That's really all I got to say. If you guys missed me talking about anything, any of the matches, they will be in the link, or not in the link, in the description below on my prediction who's going to win stuff. As well as my Facebook and my Twitter. You guys can like my Facebook page, follow my Twitter if you guys want to. As well, you can like, comment on any of my videos, especially this one or any of my older ones, as well as you guys, if you guys like my content and you want to keep up with me, then feel free to then feel free to subscribe to my channel. And really rockers, until next time, live free and rock.